Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day. We are playing trivia because it's Friday night. Now, I've made a whole ton of changes, as many of you know. Uh, my colors are a little weird today, still figuring that out. I actually went back to my old program I was using, but tried to bring over some of the changes. We will see if some of the extra games currently work. They might be a little bit of trouble, but we will make sure those are working in the future aka next week now we are going to do a little bit of a review of this week it was washington week for the american revolution for founder of the day here so what i am going to do i am playing with a few things because a whole bunch of extra stuff i have to get i've got going on over here i am going to bounce over here to what i'm calling study hall where we will be going through uh, all the fun stuff now i am going to have to add real quick uh just paste this in here so that your chat can show up hoping to automate all this of course none of the programs are perfect why would any of the programs work well over to our right your question should appear uh we will see how that works um and then we will also eventually uh come over here to play trivia and i am also going to add your stuff here for later as people are rolling in getting some of the details out of the way it's all very exciting uh bounce over here to study hall where i am going to put up a timer for uh trivia countdown to trivia is going to be uh let's say 20 minutes long. it's 15 after let's do 15 minutes from now so that way people popping in a little bit late can see what's going on i don't know why it's not popping up uh but it's not <laughs> anyway uh, okay well nothing seems to work we are going to talk a little bit about the washington family we're going to start off over here to my side with william washington willie washington is a lot of fun uh from my perspective really seems to be the most important washington after general george when it comes to the um the actual war effort itself. So, okay, it's in there. I'm not sure why it's not counting down. Okay, anyway, should be should be counting down right here. And I don't know why it's not. There's a, oh, because I have it. Oh, okay. Maybe if I uh, unblock it, you can actually see it. Here we are. Let's talk for a few minutes about the Washington family. We have kind of a theme this week, uh, and it's the other Washingtons hanging around. Uh, William Washington was a nephew of George Washington. He signs up with the Continental Army uh, pretty much right off the bat. He's elected as a colonel. Uh, his father actually was uh, a brother, John Washington, of George Washington, who goes to the Virginia Convention, that uh, the 5th Virginia Convention, which famously declared independence from great britain before the continental congress did just a few months before uh really an impetus to push the continental congress in that direction so william was about 23 years old at this point and william signs up with the continental army uh he's a captain uh his number two in command is a 16 year old boy named james monroe uh, these two would participate in several battles in the North at the beginning of the war, including the Battle of Trenton, which famously was taken pretty easily by the Americans, but there were a, only a few casualties. But William Washington and James Monroe were both very severely injured at this point. Now, this was only the first time William was injured in the war. Uh, he would heal and then later join the Southern Department, uh, go down, constantly get promoted in rank. He ends up becoming a commander of the 4th Continental Light Dragoons. Now, Dragoons are essentially like, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, they're pretty much like uh, cavalry, except cavalry stays on their horse and keeps fighting. Dra Dragoons had really heavy equipment, so that's why they rode the horses, but they would dismount to fight during uh, uh, engagements of that nature. Uh on top of this, uh, he would end up participating in, in a lot, most of the major battles in the Southern Campaign during the Revolutionary War. Uh, he, he Probably the most interesting thing that William Washington does is at, at the battle at Rugley's Mill. It's not even a battle of Rugley's Mill. Basically, a bunch of Brits are hiding in a barn. And William Washington comes with his men and says, hey, get out of there. We'd like to capture you, please. And the Brits were like, no, thanks. So 
William used what's called a Quaker gun, and this is the first instance of a Quaker gun being used that we know of. Uh, obviously, Quaker guns were used in the past. Uh, basically, what a Quaker gun is, is a log that you paint black and at a distance might look like a cannon, and you tell your enemy it is a cannon, and that's what they did and the British believed him. Now, I think it's called a Quaker gun in kind of a not-so-friendly way because Quakers are famously pacifists, and therefore, here's our Quaker gun. Be afraid of it, even though it's not really going to hurt you like a Quaker. I know. Sorry, Quakers, but that is what they called it. Now, wasn't really a pop... Probably this method had been used throughout human history before. This is the first time it's documented, uh, and it goes on to be actually a really important tool during the Civil War. Uh, uh, William Washington would later be at the Battle of Cowpens, a famous battle. He gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with Bannister Tarleton, of all people, a really famous uh, person when it comes to the enemy, when you study the Revolutionary War. Uh, he gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, gets wounded by a stray bullet, but still gives chase to Tarleton for several miles, but can't keep up because of the bullet wound. That's injury number two. He then goes and fights at Utah Springs. He's in an engagement in thick brush. His horse is shot out from under him. The horse traps him on the ground. The British come and bayonet him and take him prisoner. Injury number three. He somehow survives all these injuries. Luckily, Utah Springs was just a, a little bit before Yorktown, and he's released pretty quickly thereafter. He goes on to move to South Carolina and has a pretty important uh, little career there where he serves in the state uh, Senate on several occasions. And he's actually floated as a gubernatorial candidate, but he does not accept that position because he thinks that if you were to be the chief executive of a state or a nation, you should be born in that state. And as he was born in Virginia, he did not accept that position, uh, that particular position. Let's keep rolling through here. Bushrod Washington. While William Washington was the second most important Washington to the war effort, Bushrod Washington is the second most important Washington to the federal government. Bushrod is a, um, a nephew of Washington. I'm sorry, before I said William Washington was his nephew, William Washington was a cousin of George. Bushrod was a nephew to his brother John. I apologize, I got that a little mixed up before. Uh, Bushrod is studies law. He studies under some of the most brilliant minds, both George Wythe, mostly in Virginia, but also James Wilson, a signer of the Declaration and Constitution from uh, Pennsylvania. He ends up for a little bit studying next to John Marshall, under George Wythe, which would become important later. And he does sign up for the Continental Army uh, at 19 years old, but he goes he and he goes to the Battle of Yorktown, and that's his first battle, and that's pretty much his last battle, because, you know, Yorktown. Now, he never rises above the rank of private, despite his familial connections. Uh, he goes back to Virginia, makes his way up the political ranks pretty quickly, uh, writes a bunch of important legal documents uh, of cases in Virginia, uh, by the time he's 25, he's elected to the House of Delegates. At 26, he goes to the Const Constitutional Ratification Convention in Virginia, where he supports the Constitution, which was very much in question in Virginia at the time. Uh, his skills in the courtroom would develop, and by 1799, he is appointed by President John Adams as an associate justice on the United States Supreme Court. Now, this is really interesting because he sides mostly with the Federalists despite being from Virginia. And just two years later, John Marshall gets appointed to the Supreme Court, his old college buddy. Now, John Marshall is famous as one of the most, if not the most important chief justices in the history of the United States Supreme Court. But often overlooked is Bushrod Washington, who sits right next to John Marshall and agrees with him on almost everything for 30 years. So, when we look at John Marshall and say, look at how much power this guy had, all the decisions he made, we cannot overlook the fact that it was easy for him to sway the opinion of the court when he had Bushrod Washington on his side for all but three cases over 30 years. It's, it's, it's really important to acknowledge that this team existed to make these decisions and carry out these justices. Uh, Bushrod also is the one who inherits Mount Vernon when George Washington passes away. Now, George Washington, and, I, and you have to bring this up, George Washington kind of famously uh, freed his uh, enslaved persons in his will, uh, or at least when his spouse passed away. 
Bushrod Washington inherits Mount Vernon and moves there and brings new slaves there, which is sad, especially because Bushrod Washington was a longtime president of the American Colonization Society. Uh, the American Colonization Society was established uh, leading into the James Monroe administration in an effort to find a way to free slaves that they thought would be fair and equitable to everyone, especially the slaves. Now, in hindsight, we know this isn't very equitable, but what they did is they formed a colony in Liberia, which is now a nation of Liberia. Side note, Liberia's capital, the nation, today, is Monrovia, named after United States President James Monroe. It's the only capital of another nation named after an American president. Uh, Bush, there's also like a Bushrod Island there too, named after this guy. He was called out in his day for owning slaves while being the leader, the longtime president of the American Colonization Society. People were like, well, if you're, why are we going to give you, you know, liberate our slaves to send them overseas? Why don't you lead by example? Which he never really had a good answer for. Um, uh, and last interesting thing about James Monroe, uh, I'm sorry, about Bushrod Washington. I've seen a, there's a, a, youtuber called useful charts that does like family trees and fun stuff like that and he actually did what if washington was king who would be the heirs and there are three different possible lines of course george washington never was king never would have been king didn't want to be king but there were three possible lines that this guy traces uh one of which is through his uh step grandson which is the least likely line that goes down through uh actually washington's step granddaughter marries Robert E. Lee. So Robert E. Lee would have been um, the married to the Queen of America, whatever that is, King Regent or something of that nature. Uh, that's the least likely line. The most likely line would have actually gone back up through Washington's oldest brother. His oldest brother's son would have been uh, the next in line. That's the most likely scenario according to how British monarchies worked. But the, the middling scenario is that it would have gone to the person who inherited his property. So there is a slight chance, we'll say a 28% uh, chance, that had George Washington been king, he, Bushrod Washington would have been his heir. So the second American king would have been King Bushrod. Anyway, let's keep going. A few more people to get through before we get to trivia. Lund Washington was a cousin, another cousin of George Washington who took care of the property at Mount Vernon. Uh, was the caretaker. Uh, so when George Washington was away, Lund oversaw Mount Vernon. And while he was there, uh, the British came knocking. They were burning down all the houses on the Potomac. And they said, hey, Lund, uh, we don't want to hurt George Washington's... Uh, we don't want... I, I see your question, Robert. I'll get right back to you. Uh, we don't want to hurt George Washington's uh, property. I have too much respect for George Washington. So let's just uh not burn it down give me some stuff and lund says no 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 i'm not going to give you washington stuff he knows what he's gotten into and the british say they come back come on my ship have some beers with me have some wine madeira uh and they do and eventually lund says okay take some a few things some slaves some turkeys a whole bunch of other provisions and he leaves and george washington finds out about this and gets furious he's like first of all what's it going to look like when when the we're giving the british my stuff Second of all, what's it going to look like when all my neighbor's houses are burned down and mine's fine just fine? Uh, now, this all ends up blowing over, but uh, that's what Lund Washington is semi-most famous for. Alexander Spotswood. So, uh, the Spotswood family was a really important family in Virginia. Uh, almost a dynasty, if you will. And uh, uh, Alexander, his grandfather and namesake, also Alexander Spotwood, is the most famous one. If you Google Alexander Spotwood, his grandfather comes up because he was a longtime governor of colonial Virginia who really prepped Virginia to be a state. Now, this guy uh, marries, you know, comes from colonial almost royalty and marries into Virginia almost royalty, a.k.a. the Washington family. He marries Elizabeth Washington. Elizabeth was the niece of uh, George Washington. Uh, it, he was uh, Augustine's. She was Augustine's daughter. She moves to Mount Vernon as in a, as a preteen and ends up living at Mount Vernon until she gets married to Alexander Spotswood. Now, Spotswood actually served in the Continental Army also, 
Unfortunately, he made a deal with his brother John that if one of the two of them was killed in the war, the other one would resign their commission and go back and take care of both families. And John was killed, and Alexander goes back to take care of both families. Although John wasn't killed. Two years later, John shows up, and we're like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing here? And he's like, I didn't die, I survived my wounds in a British prison... And they just released me. So that's great. Uh, and, and that's why I call him a revolutionary family man. Um, he also sold Thomas Jefferson a horse named the General in 1775, which is kind of random. But I did want to throw that in there. Uh, lastly, Billy Lee. William Lee, uh, better known as Billy Lee, was George Washington's slave. He was the personal servant of Washington, with George, morning, noon, and night, uh, essentially waiting on him hand and foot, but being a part of his life, uh, uh, very directly, spending arguably the most time with George Washington during the Revolutionary War, more than anyone else. Uh, Billy ends up, uh, serves, 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 hey John Adams, thank you for coming, sir, we're gonna play trivia in just a few minutes. Um, what was I saying? So Billy, uh, of course, everything he did as a slave was coerced, and we should acknowledge that. But uh, he is there at the head of the Continental Army for eight years with George Washington. Uh, he only, unfortunately, he ends up uh, getting some debilitating knee injuries. And that's why he doesn't join George Washington to when they travel to uh, uh, become president. But either way, uh, Billy Lee, again, despite it being coerced, is a part of some of the most important parts of American history. He's right there at the head of it. He's standing next to Washington in the field while the bullets are flying. He's at the Battle of Yorktown helping do the menial tasks that are never appreciated in any organization uh, that operated the organization that was the Continental Army, the business that was the Continental Army. He did, you know, writing letters, picking out uniforms, like, like I said, very menial, unfortunately slave tasks, but necessary tasks. Uh, in fact, when George Washington in his will, he liberates all his slaves upon the death of his wife, except for one. Billy Lee was liberated immediately, and I think I have a quote here. Uh, yes, uh, George Washington's will reads, when freeing William Lee, it was due to, quote, his attachment to me and for his faithful services during the Revolutionary War. Billy Lee is, is a really, really interesting character during the Revolution. Uh, now, I'm going to pop back up uh, Spotswood here because there was one other group I wanted to go through that I didn't actually write an article about this week, uh, and it was the Washington family. Washington had siblings, you may not know, uh, some of whom actually saw him become president of the United States. Uh, you have Lawrence Washington, who's famous for really being the father figure to George when uh, his actual father passes away. Lawrence goes with Washington. The one time he leaves the continental United States, goes to the Caribbean with Lawrence, who was sick, trying to find cures, the better air for him there. That's where Washington gets smallpox and survives and therefore gets inoculated from it. Uh, he was just 19 when Lawrence dies. Uh, his other brother, stepbrother, I should say, from a different mother, uh, Augustine, ends up choosing Pope's Creek. Now, Augustine should have gotten Mount Vernon. It was the nicer property, but he wanted a different Washington property, Pope's Creek. And that's why George Washington got Mount Vernon, which, by the way, Mount Vernon is named after uh, Vice Admiral Ed Edward Vernon, who was Lawrence's commander during uh, earlier engagements when he was part of the British Army. Oh, I forget. I think it was the Seven Years' War, but I might be wrong. It might be Jenkins' ear or something of that nature. Please let me know in the comments if you know which war it is that... Uh, if you could remind me that Lawrence fought under. Uh, so we have Lawrence and Augustine. Then we have Washington, born George Washington. And then after that, he has actual siblings, di uh, direct siblings. You know, not that step siblings are not actual. <laughs> um, uh, first of which is the only woman, uh, Betty Washington, who is married a gentleman named Fielding Lewis. And they both contributed to the cause. Uh, pretty much, uh, he ran a store that really helped import a lot of things for the Continental Army. Additionally, they lived in Fredericksburg, Virginia. She's most notable for taking care of uh, uh, Mary Ball, a.k.a. George Washington's mother, who was kind of a pain in the ass. I'm sorry, pain in the rear for pre uh, pre literally pre General Washington very much. But then uh, the last time Washington sees his mom is when he's on his way to New York to take over as president. And she was always having money problems. She, like, his mom appealed to the governor of Virginia, Benjamin Harrison, for a pension. 
uh, at one point at, during the Revolutionary War where Benjamin writes to George and is like, hey, thank you, Colonel. War Jenkins, uh, uh, Jenkins here. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, um, yeah, so Benjamin Harrison writes to George and is like, hey, man, I know you're busy running the war, but did you know your mom is asking the government for money? <laughs> and George is like, don't give her any money. I gave her so much money. Uh, and, and Betty, his sister Betty, was really responsible for taking care of that mother. Uh, then there's Samuel Washington, the first boy, boy born after George. Um, he actually signed the Westmoreland Resolves, which was written by Henry Lee way back in 1766. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard Henry Lee, way back in 1766, uh, protesting the Stamp Act. So he was, uh, his younger brother Samuel was actually arguably earlier on to the Patriot cause than he was. Uh, before the Revolutionary War actually starts, he moved on to what would today be considered West Virginia, uh, and he built a mansion that later James and Dolly Madison would be married in. So that's really what Samuel's most famous for. Uh, then there is John A. Washington. Uh, again, father of Bushrod Washington, the aforementioned very important person. And I know I've run out of time, but I'm going to get through the family here. Uh, we only got a few more siblings. Um, uh, he ends up, uh, yeah, he's famous for being the father of, although he, he, John Washington also signed the Virginia Res Rev resolution, which as I said before, declared it, um, yes, John A. Uh, and then last but least, there is Charles Washington. Uh, he, along with Betty, were the only two siblings to actually see George become president. And they were younger than him. Keep that in mind. Uh, well, of course they were. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Well, there were some younger than Betty who passed away. Uh, Charles doesn't play really any war in the Revolution. He ends up going over to... He moves closer to his brother Samuel in West Virginia. He forms an, a, a, a Charles town which I don't believe is Charleston, West Virginia. I believe it's Charlestown, West Virginia. Uh, and he's kind of famous for that uh, in, for, he named all the roads after his siblings, basically. Uh, interestingly enough, he passes away in September of 1799, which is three months before George Washington. So for three months, George Washington was the only Washington sibling still alive. I hope you had fun. Let's do some trivia. Who wants to do that trivia? Hi, Whammy. My name's Jason. Welcome to Trivia. Here we go. First of all, what was George Washington's middle name? Do you know? Do you? Do you? Do you? I am going to pop up this while you're answering that. We're going to timer. Okay. And then I'm going to do that. And you've got a minute. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Not everything's going terrible. I don't have anything in the top corner yet. I did run out of time. I worked on this for like three hours and I was still 10 minutes late <laughs> to start trivia. I assure you we'll be getting there. Uh, and I'm going to go back while you guys are telling me what George Washington's middle name is. I'm going to come back here and read Robert's question. I, I want to get to it. Wasn't the size of the Supreme Court only six justices at this time? With Marshall and Washington in lockstep for 30 years in the court, Marshall would need two Federalist-minded judges. Uh, the number of persons on the Supreme Court has changed over time. The Constitution doesn't actually specify what should be in the Supreme Court. The Constitution leaves a lot of the court up in up in the air, which is what the anti-federalists were complaining about to a very large degree. Uh, I don't know uh, the exact number at this point. It, like I said, it fluctuated a little bit. Um, so uh, that is a good question. And yes, I was less than nine. So yes, Rob, Rod, Bushrod, uh, and John definitely could have gotten things through pretty much easier. And everyone seems to be coming through with the correct answer. He didn't have one trick question. I tricks you. Deal with it. Okay. So we're going to take off that timer here and we're going to go on to question numero deuce. Okay. After George, which member of the Washington family was most important to the war effort? Which, who was the second most important Washington when it came to winning the Revolutionary War itself? We're going to pop up a timer here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's do one, two, three, time. Let's see how that works. Uh, oh, did it start over? Did it start over? Okay, well, whatever. Here we go. See, John, okay. 
We got a John and we got a William Washington. We got a few more people here playing trivia too. We got 46 seconds. I'm going to call this one a little bit early. It took me, a, for whatever reason, I started a little bit late. All right. And we're waiting and we're waiting. And I'm going to give you the answer. Here it is. It is William Washington, uh, John A. Washington's son. So nice try, Mr. Adams. I know you're going to go with that answer the whole time. I, sh I don't think his middle name was Adams. I think his middle name was Augustine. But again, that is not something I'm a thousand percent uh, uh, knowing on. Is that a word? All right, here's another question. What was a Quaker gun? Quaker gun. And we did discuss this a little bit today. Uh, it's an interesting weapon. Now, it is the type of weapon that was probably used for thousands of years, but the first time we know it by this particular name was part of one of the stories we discussed today. We have Johnny A down there saying it's a gun. I also realized I should probably put this over here so that when I read what you're saying, it looks like I'm looking at the question as opposed to looking away from everyone in the world. Okay, Mr. Burton. A wood cannon. You know what, Michael, did you just send me a message? Yeah, you did. I, You know what? I was setting things up. I have not yet read it, and I do apologize for that. I Oh, it was like an hour ago. Yes, I, like I said, I've been working very hard. Uh, I will get back to you with an answer on that. Uh, it's not necessarily meant. Not the best question for trivia, but it is a great question. I will get back to you on that. Okay, it was a troll. Yeah, oh, oh, man, I really, oh, okay, I'm hiding things on myself, but I do like that answer. Oh, how did it get there? Okay, yes. Twas, twas a troll, Misfit. I do like the way you said that. Uh, it was a log painted black to look like a cannon from a distance. So, I'm going to hit a few more periods here. Okay. Okie doke. Question number the next. Let's go with what was the name of George Washington's main property? And you know what? Let me give it a five. Will that work? Let's see. Nope. Trying to make it 30 seconds. And that's not, it's not going to let me do it. It will not let me do it in seconds. Can I put it in? Okay. We'll let it ride at one. Try new things. Thank you for your patience, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to make this awesome for you guys. And it's, you know, it's been a long haul and there's still very many errors. And I'm going to call it there because most of you do understand what the name of the property was. It was, in absolute actuality, Mount Vernon, kind of an easy one. Wompity womp womp. Though, he did have a property he never built a house on that he sold called Round Bottom, which is why for a year and a half, I ended my sign off as Round Bottom. Kenny Bunkport, oof, wasn't that wealthy. <laughs> all right, all right, question the next. Who was Mount Vernon named after? We discussed this a little bit briefly, and I'm gonna take a sip see of water, sip see. I'm gonna take a little bit of sip of water over here. If you like my stylized Betsy Ross mug, whoa, whoa. Feel free to check out my merch where I sell it. I also put out a cool new, uh, I should have put up a, 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 a picture to show you guys. Uh, I very much came out with a new coffee mug uh, for Henry Knox that I adore. Uh, I don't have it on me here. I have this one. But uh, I, I like men with big guns is the phrase on it. I think it's cute and catchy and a little bit silly. And sometimes, sometimes we have to have some fun. Okay, Michael. Okay, Mount Vernon. Deborah, I don't know if you're a little behind answering the last question. I think that's what's happening here. But that's okay. Yes, his brother's admiral, Admiral Vernon. Ooh, I was so close with that time. I'm going to get there. Vice Admiral Edward Burton, uh, who, as we've established earlier, fought in the War of Jenkins' ear and oversaw, excuse me, Lawrence. The Borance Washington. That was his nickname. Write it down. That's not true. Don't write it down. Question the next. What position in the federal government was held by the person who inherited Mount Vernon? 
and I am going to timer it. Okay, one minute. You have one minute. Me too. Yes. British Admiral Vernon. Deborah, you're a little bit behind us, but that's okay because it means you're getting the answers late too. Thank you so much for playing. I hope you're having fun either way. Uh, okay. Okay, Michael coming in with President. Okay, Michael, to be more specific, uh, what position in the what position in the federal government was held by the person who inherited Mount Vernon from George Washington? Is that a little bit better? Misfit, is your PFP Cobra Kai? I don't know what PFP means, but I do. Uh, I am a. I was never a big Karate Kid fan, but I am looking. For, I have watched the the TV series, and I am looking forward to the new series. Okie dokie, times ip, and it was Supreme Court Justice Bushrod Washington. You're all pretty close, uh, Colonel. Pretty close, but Bushrod was never Chief Justice. He was an Associate Justice. John Marshall was the Chief Justice, uh, and he also. Um, Actually, he not only inherited Mount Vernon, but he also inherited George Washington's papers that he worked with John Marshall to publish the first one of the first biographies of George Washington. When Washington died, publishing biographies became all the rage. Okie dokie. Now, I want to throw this out there real quick while we're waiting for the next question. Uh, I'm using the program that we were using last week. So if you guys want to type exclamation point continentals and see how much money you have, see if that works, you could do it. Uh, you also, I'm going to type something down here. I am going to type exclamation point heist and the number 10. Uh, it's a capital H. I don't know if it's going to work because I went back to my old program that I used to use. Uh, we'll see. It does say it's working here. Uh, it says, so it's giving John Adam his continentals, but it's not giving seemingly, uh, the time. Oh, the British are coming. Uh, I am calling together a militia. So if you guys type exclamation point heist space 10, just like I did, then you will uh, be able to play the game. And what's going to happen is we are uh, going to try and take Lexington and Concord as a team there in the comments. Now, I should put it up here. I will do that next week. I will set it up to be up there. Still figuring it out. Um, uh, Michael, it's Continentals is a lowercase c, and there's an S at the end. Yes, everyone jumping in for the heist. Uh, it gives us about two minutes. Uh, okay, it says treasure hunt. There's still a few adjustments I have to make to make it all better, but we are getting there. Okay, and also, for whatever reason, Streamlabs jumps in. Not sure why it's not George Washingbot. It's the program that runs George Washingbot. Uh, okay, here we are. The Minutemen have rallied. Huzzah! The militia chased the British back to Boston. They celebrate with a chest full of gold and a belly full of rum. It was originally a pirate thing. I have not necessarily edited all of it. All right, and some people won some stuff. Colonel won, and I won. All right, let's see if anyone else won. So the way this works, what's happening here is for every five minutes you watch this live, you get five Continentals. And we use the Continentals to play various games. This heist, this is one of the games. I need to rename it something like Lexington and Concord, uh, but we're getting there. Uh, we will also... Uh, there are a slew of games that will be added over the coming weeks. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, okay, it has begun. Interesting, interesting. So my one screen set tells me a whole bunch of extra stuff over here. I'm just glad it worked over here. Uh, for whatever reason, it looks like Colonel and I are the only ones who got to play. Uh, John, you didn't use a capital H for heist. I'm going to fix that next week, make it all lowercase. Uh, Robert, no idea. No idea why it doesn't like you. <laughs> I do apologize. Uh, I, my understanding is it will take a handful of times for the program to really catch up and work appropriately. Um, anyway, let's do some more trivia. Question number six we were on. Okay, what what did George Angry 
what did George angry? What did George Washington get angry at his cousin Lund Washington for? What was he made so mad his cousin about? Uh, Mr. Johnny, in music, we are learning the history of the national anthem and we are singing it and stuff. And there's a girl from Britain in the class and she was mad because we killed the British. Okay. Well, tell her the national anthem came around uh, a lot later than the American Revolution. So she doesn't have to be so mad. It's a little bit closer to when we saved Britain. So let her know that, that the, the national anthem comes. Actually, uh, the, the, the song I was... Uh, the, 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 the song I was learning about recently is she's a grand old flag was from like 1906 or something. And there's like, I, I don't know why I found myself singing she's a grand old flag, but I did. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, oh, the national, of course, national anthem is, is Francis Scott Key, War of 1812, whose uncle, uh, Philip Barton Key was a loyalist who went back to Britain and then comes back to the United States and gets a position in the federal government. <laughs> There are several people who were loyalists who end up becoming important in the federal government. We did beat them, but they attacked us. They started. Uh, and I forgot to put the timer up. That's okay. We'll just assume that uh, Michael essentially gets it right. Uh, giving the British his stuff. Uh, uh, it was John uh, Washington's mother, Mary, asked for a lot of money. But uh, his cousin Lund, who was the caretaker at Mount Vernon... Uh, gave British his stuff. That's a uh, Michael parlaying with the British sloop is a much more appropriate way to put it. <laughs> um, bonus points for that. Okay, next question. Who was the only slave at Mount Vernon that Washington set free immediately upon his death? Uh, I would say arguably the most important enslaved person uh, working at Mount Vernon. Now, of course, I probably shouldn't rank the importance of slaves, but I shouldn't rank the importance of anyone, and I do that all the time on this channel. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to do a live video with a little bit of ranking tomorrow night. Uh, I have not set it up quite yet, but look for that. About 8 o'clock tomorrow, we're going to do a top 10 something something, and it's going to be fun. Uh, the name. I'm gonna do one next Saturday too, and I'll, I'll have that planned out in advance. I spent so much time trying to make this better than it looks today that I didn't get ahead like I had planned to do. Okay. The one due during the Revolutionary War. Well, we've got, I guess, 15 seconds here. I've got to figure out how to make this 30 seconds. This countdown. Don't know if I can. Still trying to figure it out. And five and a four. And a three, and a two, and a one. Time. I got it to fit on the screen. We're doing it. Billy Lee. It was Billy Lee. Full name William Lee, better known as Billy Lee. He's actually in a lot of paintings of George Washington. Most of the full body portraits of George Washington actually have Billy Lee in the background. Uh, I, I was reading this week, John Trumbull uh, was one of Jonathan Trumbull's kids. Uh, served in the Continental Army, served as an aide de camp to George for a little bit, and then ends up going to London to study painting. And while he's there, he paints from memory a picture of George Washington that includes Billy Lee in the background. Oh. Oh, this one's fun. Can you name four of George Washington's siblings? Try and put them all in the same comment. That'll be that that'll that's what'll make it count. Name four of George Washington's uh, I want to say six siblings. Uh, oh, oh, the painting of the Revolutionary War. So interesting. That's an interesting one. the The painting of the of the of them crossing the Delaware came a lot later. It was propaganda. <laughs> um, uh, and there's questions about exactly who is the black man represented in that picture. Truthfully, it's probably just a dude. Most of the people in that picture were just generic soldiers uh i have heard it's him i have heard it is uh salem poor although i don't think that's true uh, i've heard it's prince whipple which doesn't make any sense he wasn't there for it uh he was down in philly at the time uh and there's another gentleman that is most likely whose name escapes me but that's okay all right, we've got a few here. Uh, William, John, Veronica, and Brittany. Those are incorrect. Um, we have Robert coming through with Augustus, Greg, Marcia, Peter, Jan, Bobby. Nope. 
uh, John Adams, James Monroe was in the painting. That's right, James Monroe, who was serving with William Washington at the time. Again, that was done much later because William Washington is not in the picture, and the, I assure you, he was not in the boat <laughs> with John with uh, President Jefferson. So, or uh, President General Washington. Oh my God, so many things happening in my mind. Uh, it does appear that Colonel wins this particular round. Lawrence and Augustine from a different mother, same father. Betty, Samuel, John, and Chaz. Charlie down there, just hanging around. Okay, uh, Lawrence and Augustine missed the revolution entirely. And in fact, if they were alive, George Washington probably would not have been George Washington because he would have had older brothers who were taking his seat in the Virginia House of Burgesses. And we're going to plippity-plop on over here to what is unfortunately... Our final question of the day. Who was president when George Washington died? I mean, I even tricked myself with that question just reading. <laughs> Who was president of the United States of America when George Washington died? I guess for this one, you're going to have to know when he died, which is interesting. You're also going to have to know who was president that time when he died. We've got a few answers coming in here. Everyone, everyone coming in pretty quick. All right. Uh, it's mostly just the three of us playing. So I am going to pop this off. And I am going to give you the answer. It was John Adams. John Adams. I mean, Ad Adams. Dude, how? <laughs> How did you get it wrong? I know you, you doubled back and changed it, but, you know, that, that should be your question, bud. <laughs> John Adams, uh, from my perspective, probably George Washington is famous for setting all the precedents as the first president, right? From my perspective, the most important precedent George Washington set was retiring because if his president was three terms, okay, we have presidents serving for three terms, except he dies during that third term. And if Washington didn't retire when he did, he would have died in his third term, and the president would have been serving for life. Though, I will acknowledge, for the term precedent, the, the credit really goes to Thomas Jefferson, who served for two terms, and, you know, George Washington did two terms. And then Adams could have done what he wanted, but he only won once. And then Jefferson probably could have won again. But he followed Washington's lead, which actually made it a precedent. If Jefferson had run for a third term, he definitely would have won. And no precedent. So a little bit of thumbs up to Tommy Jeff on that one. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying over here. I have a lot to deal with, like writing essays for Hamilton. Okay. John Adams is confused tonight. That's okay. All right. I'm going to pop myself right back up here. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, John Adams, what, what essays are you writing about Hamilton? Uh, you've got me curious. Uh, as always, guys, uh, not only do we play trivia here, I put out Founders every morning in pre-recorded videos. I've been doing live read-alongs of the Federalist uh, papers. Uh, I am going to actually start. I'm going to do two more live on YouTube, and then I'm going to start doing them live uh, through Patreon. I will put them up on YouTube afterwards so everyone can watch it, of course. Uh, but the live read-alongs I'm going to start doing through Patreon uh, to give everyone there a little bit uh, something extra. So if you want to comment there, not a ton of people watch them live anyway, but if you want to watch live for those and comment on them and a actually be able to ask questions, uh, that will then be continued in the video. Uh, definitely check out the link to my Patreon page down below. Uh, every little bit helps. This has been a... Uh, I've been sinking money into Founder of the Day for several years, and everyone who helped me over there, I cannot appreciate you more uh, for helping keep this channel alive and spread the information about the American Revolution. Uh, Michael Burton with Heist. Uh, Mike, type it in, uh, exclamation point Heist, and then put a number you want to wager. So say like Heist space five, and that'll let it go, and then people can play. Um, I don't know. He forces me at gunpoint to write for him. Oh, oh, you're joking. As Okay, you're in character. My mistake, friend. <laughs> um, I did. You were speaking about music classes before, and that is not something I believe a president, John Adams, would have been doing. Uh, 
interesting. Well, th yo, thank you, Michael. Thank you for coming. Uh, every Friday, we are going to do it next Friday. I will be home in time uh, from Lake George to be doing trivia. My spouse has family out there. Uh, and because of Thanksgiving, I'm referencing Thanksgiving, I will be giving thanks in the Lake George region before coming here. Oh, and there it goes. The British are coming. Colonel has launched it. All right. Um, Colonel launched it first. Michael, I don't know if you got included because you did it before the game triggered, so you might want to do it again. You can do five. Uh, it doesn't have to be ten. That's just the example I use. Uh, next week, I'm going to have, like, in the, co in, the, in the description part, some of the uh, triggers and the commands you can use to set off some of the games because we're going to add a few more. Uh, there's a... I believe you can duel each other, uh, but the word is not duel. I forget what I used. Let me let me let me check it out. Um, doo -doo 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 mini games. It is challenge exclamation point challenge all lowercase, and then type someone else's name, and you can get into a nice fun duel with someone if that's your remember. Oh. Minute Minute Rally, they're on their way. Huzzah, Colonel has chased the British back to Boston. All right, Colonel, it's just you <laughs> all by yourself. Um, yes. Going alone to battle. That's all right. It was a success. Uh, and you won 20 on your wager. You doubled your Continentals. They will add up to something. I got a few things I'm ordering to come in, you know, supply chain, so it's coming slow. But I do have a few things that I'm going to be sending out. Um. Okay, Colonel, John Adams has challenged you. If you type exclamation point challenge and then uh, John Adams, you can accept it and one of you will survive. The other one, well, satisfaction will be received, as they said back in the day there. Uh, anyone popping in late, we are just closing up. Unfortunately, it was a fun time. Make sure you like and subscribe, though. Hit the notification bell. Trivia every Friday. Uh, is there a link to get to the game? No, Robert. It's just right here. You are in the game in the comments. Uh, I don't know. You have to kind of time it right with people seems to be the issue going around. Uh, for example, Robert, if you typed in uh, chal exclamation point challenge uh, uh, someone else here, uh, Michael, if he's still here, Michael E. Burton, you got to do the whole handle. Uh, and then Michael can accept it. Oh, let's see. The fight between Colonel and John Adams has begun. Who will be the victor? The dust finally settled, and Colonel has emerged the victor. Colonel is rocking it in the comment mini games today. Well done. Uh, President Adams, you've been assassinated, apparently. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, I, I, I suppose it could be worse. It can't be. It can't be. It's literally the worst thing that's ever happened to you. <laughs> I'm sorry to go through that. Yes, your ocean of tears is the correct response. I am very, very glad that the games are working right now. If I'm being honest, I spent like an hour trying to get them to work with like my phone in one handle and, and it didn't. And I was scared. And this is a very great reprieve for me to know that it does work, even though I've gone, I've kept the new games but I've gone back to my old program because it was the new program I was using is why we were having so much trouble with uploads last week and, and you know, downtime. So I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. I'm a history nerd, not a computer nerd. So <laughs> this is a great experiment for me. Uh, with that, guys, I am out. I do think I need a new sign-off because I've combined it, combound, compressed. I've squish together the weekly review and trivia which i think is better because i can blast out especially now that i have the timer i can blast out the review of the week in the beginning as kind of like a study hall pre-game warm-up to get ready for the trivia itself uh, i do hope to up the amount of questions next week so it goes a little longer up to about uh 20 questions cross my fingers although i have a few other things i'd like to do uh, kind of in the fashion of sporkle that we have been doing there uh like you know i want to be able to have a list of like all the different documents and see if we can name all the people who signed from you know signed the constitution from georgia in a minute and things like that so it's out there that is the goal and we will get there if you guys come up with a new sign off uh until then i guess i'll sign off by combining the two uh round bottom peace field <laughs> um 
Round bottom of property George Washington owned. Peace field of property John Adams owned. Maybe I go like Montpelier, which I think is how you pronounce it. James Madison's, but I can't. Um, Providence. Is that your is that your recommendation, Colonel? Because that's a good one. Uh, with a firm reliance on divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That's a little bit pretentious for a sign-off now, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think we'll be going with that. Oh, uh, it is their right. It is their duty. Um, I'm all done here. I see some of you guys bouncing out too, which is fine. Just fine. It is nine o'clock. I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, like I said, I am going to have a fun little extra countdown tomorrow night at eight o'clock. Same founder time, same founder place. Uh, I'm going to use it this week, Colonel. I like it. I'm not sure if we're keeping it forever, but I do like it. So with that, I'll bid you guys a fine farewell and uh, Providence. Ah, wrong button. Dang it. I was so close. It's the, this is the, the it's, it's the, bye guys. Oh, it's because I'm clicked on the wrong thing. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, bye now. <laughs>